We're currently staying at the St. Regis Hotel in Osaka, Japan, and I have a huge haul to share with you guys today. And this is actually our third city that we've visited in Japan so far. We first stayed in Tokyo, then we went to Kyoto, and now we're currently in Osaka, as mentioned before. So I have a bunch of items that I've accumulated from those various cities. So I'll break the haul into various portions. For example, there will be a women's wear, men's wear, luxury goods, beauty items, and also a pet section as well. So let's just go ahead and get the room all set up. So as you can see, here are the controls to open the curtains. So let's just open the curtains and open the shears as well. I have a ton of skirts and most of the shopping was done in Tokyo and more specifically in Shibuya and Harajuku. So let's just go through the items. I have a bunch of skirts right here and we'll first start with what I'm wearing. So I got this plaid skirt, which actually is a pair of shorts and it's super comfortable and it kind of feels like gym shorts when you wear it so you don't have to worry about wearing shorts underneath your skirt already and I also got this shirt as well at Harajuku I also got this skirt in a black color as well because I think it's super easy to match and it's really comfortable because there's elastic in the back and the thing with a lot of clothes in Japan especially streetwear items most of them are one size fits all so we also went to the Comme des Garcons store in Harajuku Actually, the Comedy Garçon store in Ginza, but they have one in Harajuku as well. And this is one of their classic crew neck cardigans. So as you can see, this is a gray cardigan, and there is this gold Comedy Garçon patch on it. And I have this in a size small, and it, it's not in a cropped fit, but it ends just enough, so it's not like super long to be kind of those oversized boyfriend cardigans. And it's actually quite warm once you wear it too. So if you were to get this in the States, this would retail for about $450 to $500. But since we're getting this in Japan, and this brand originated in Japan, this one retailed for $250 US dollars converted back from yen. So I think that's a quite good deal. And if you are traveling to Japan, I would highly recommend to you to check out Comme des Garçons. And next up, we went to the Babe store, which was in Harajuku. So this is a velour hoodie. As you can see, it is accented by all these silver detailing, and there's this patch on the front. The most striking feature, of course, is because this is a shark hoodie, the shark detailing on the hood on both sides. So this hoodie actually has a full zip, so if you were to wear it, you could zip it up all the way, and it actually looks like a shark. So if you were to get this babe hoodie in the US, it would cost you around $450, but however, since we purchased this in Japan, we only paid around $300, so that's a significant I guess deal I guess so I would highly recommend you to check out Babe in Japan if you are planning to travel there or hold off on your purchases if you were going to Japan. And I also got this peplum style shirt from Liz Lisa and Liz Lisa is a hugely popular brand and I believe in SF they only have one storefront and of course in Japan and more specifically Shibuya this brand is really popular and has this lace and kind of like ruffle detailing on the sleeves and in the back there's like this elastic detailing to pull it all in and of course the bow. Next up I got in Harajuku is also this plaid skirt. So I initially saw these skirts of course in the 90s when they first came out but then American Apparel brought it back a few months ago but those skirts are like 60 so I got this one for actually about like $15 I think. So and this one is again one size fits all and it has like this polyester lining inside. Next up I got this blue jersey skirt which is kind of like a sailor vibe and is actually super cheap and it was only nine bucks. And for $9, this also comes lined as well. So I also have this skirt, which is more of a unique look. It actually has these detachable suspenders, which I don't know if people would call this like a kawaii style or whatever style this is. But here, let me just show you how it would look. There's the front, the straps would go like straight in the front. And then on the back, there would be a crisscross. Lastly, I got this sweater from Harajuku. And this one was actually quite cheap and it's a quintessential Japanese style when I think of like Japanese schoolgirl or whatever and especially for a piece that you would wear on like an everyday basis. So this one costs $15 and it kind of has these eyelet detailings along the front of it and kind of like these little flower buttons and this does remind me of something that I would have worn back in the 90s. So now we're moving on to the luxury goods portion of this haul. The first one is from Chanel and the second one is from Rolex. 
And as you may know, currently the Japanese yen is currently down, so if you are from the US or another country, now is a good time to buy it because you will get a slight discount. I'll first go over the Chanel. So let's just reveal it in here. So it's actually this vintage tote bag. This is from the year 2002. This is in a black caviar leather, which is in a quite good condition. So as you can see, it has a Chanel logo on the front portion and there's two straps. There's no long strap, which I think is more typical in the more current bag styles, but this bag does have a full zip. And one of the features I do like as well is this Chanel charm, which you can hang it out, but if you kind of like walk around, it kind of clangs around a little bit, but I do like the look because it's kind of like giving you that vintage 80s feel. So on the inside, it's quite spacious. It's really easy to just like slide things in and out and really great for organization too because there are two pockets. There is a zippered pocket here and also a flat pocket which is typically where I put my phone. And it does come with obviously its authenticity card with its serial number on the back. And lastly there is a nice convenient flat pocket which is really great if you want to like store. But yeah, that's the Chanel tote bag. And the most crazy thing about this bag is it's only $700. So I did buy this second hand because this is from the year 2002. But yeah, for $700, you wouldn't expect to have a Chanel bag in this condition and in this black caviar leather, which is what I wanted. I wanted a caviar leather because it is more durable and more of an everyday bag. And I do like that it holds its shape when you place it down. So yeah, there hasn't been like any indentations or like signs of too much extreme wear over the years. So yeah, that's crazy. So if you were to purchase this bag elsewhere on retailers such as farfetch.com, this would cost you around two grand. So yeah, I'm really glad that I spotted this deal and we were actually in Osaka when we purchased this. So now I'm just going to show you what this bag looks like once worn. So most typically I think I'll be wearing it on my arm just like this and then yeah, all your belongings can be really close to you and it's really convenient if you want to grab your phone or reach in the back pocket for anything. You can also wear it on your shoulder like this. I think it's a little bit less flush, I guess, because it has this base, which also is a good thing in a way because it helps to maintain the bag shape. But yeah, that's what it looks like if you wear it on your arm. Or you can also just hold it in the front as well if you're feeling tired or whatever. So yeah, there's many uses for this bag and I think it's a really great everyday bag, especially considering that it's a black caviar leather. So the next item is not mine, it's my boyfriend's that he bought, but it's this Rolex and I'm just gonna reveal and show you what it looks like. So this is a brand new Rolex and it will state the origin is from Japan. So I think that's, that would also help for resale purposes. And so, yeah, this is a Rolex Milgau style and it has this emerald color sapphire bezel and this is a Swiss made watch and it originally the style came out in the 1950s, however, they recently brought it back in 2008. So it's kind of a watch that you won't see too commonly on the market, I guess. So I think it is rising to more popularity. As you can see, this is the Oyster Perpetual and these only need to be serviced for maintenance every five years is what they recommend. So if you were to get this in the US, it would retail around 8,200 and once again, this is for a brand new watch. However, in Japan, my boyfriend paid six grand for it and that is a pretty steep discount, I think. And also if you were to look at other online retailers such as jomashop.com, which is pretty popular for buying new or used Rolexes. And this is actually one grand cheaper than Joma Shop. So, I think if you do that comparison while you're at the store, you will be able to weigh whether it is a good deal or not. And also based on the currency exchange rates at the time, you can just weigh that for yourself and see. But yeah, I think this is definitely an investment piece. So now we're going to move on to the anime portion of the haul and this is once again quintessentially Japan and yeah, let's just take this stuff to the bathroom and show you what, what we got. We're going to open up the blinds, so it's actually controlled by this control pad right here. Just press open, and there you go. So here we have the night view of Osaka, and we're currently staying on the 24th floor. So you can see the views are pretty crazy. Let's just get started with the first item, which is what I'm wearing now. It's actually this dress from this store that we purchased at Shibuya 109, and it's a store called Sweet Honey. But this is what the dress looks like. It has like this bow in the back and it also has like this lining 
So this dress retailed for $80 and most of the dresses retailed for around that price point. If you were to get this in the States, you'd be paying a lot more. The next item is this maid costume, which I purchased at Akihabara, which is actually kind of like the more nerdy district where a lot of anime people tend to hang out. But yeah, you can get crazy deals here. For example, this dress was only 40 bucks and that was one of their specials at that time. So once again, if you were to get this in the US, it would be at least 100 bucks. And as I had previously mentioned, a lot of the clothes in Japan are one size fits all. So the same applies for this costume as well. But as I'll show you in the back, it is pretty easily customizable. If you're a smaller build, you can just tie the bow tighter in the back and you won't have an issue. So now we're moving on to the second item of this anime portion of the haul, which is this My Melody Kikurumi. Now Kikurumis are like these, kind of like the American onesie. Once again, this is a one size fits all piece and it has this My Melody headpiece with like these ears, and the bow on the top, and of course her face. It's quite long, but at least the feet don't have the the sock portion I guess so you can just pull it up and it's easily adjustable depending on your height so it's kind of like she's wearing a hat if you can see <laughs> it was like two for 80 and once again if you buy this in the US this will be around 80 to 100 so that's a crazy deal in Japan once again <laughs> we have another one which is the classic Pokemon this has the ears it has the eyes it has a fully lined hood this one has a tail <laughs> which seems kind of funny and I'm not sure if that would get in the way, but yeah. So the maid cafe that we went to is called At Home Cafe in Akihabara. And yeah, as the picture shows, all of the girls were wearing costumes such as that. And of course they have these strict policies, for example, no pictures, but we used one of their preset menus for food, drink, and a picture with one of the maids. So as you can see, she signed it here and kind of decorated it to give it a more personal touch so yeah, and then you can pick which maid you want to have in your picture with you, but we just picked our waiter, our waitress. It's quite, it's not a cheap price, obviously, for attending these maid cafes and the food isn't that great. It's obviously for the experience and whatever the hype in Japan. So they give you like a few memorabilia souvenirs and one of them is a pair of chopsticks, which obviously we didn't use to eat our meal with. But she did ask what country we're from, we said America, so that's why there's an American flag here. And then also, they gave us these coasters. Well, they didn't give it to us, but it was at our table, so we decided to take it home. Because we're already, you know, saving these souvenirs. And they also have these little wet napkins that you use to wipe your hands before the meal. And typically in Japan, well, actually every single restaurant in Japan, whether it's upscale, or more budget-friendly restaurant, they do give you these either hot washcloths or little napkins to wipe your hands before the meal. And at the maid cafe, they also gave one of these license of your majesty, an international official license card, which I think is so weird. But yeah, she did ask her name. So yeah, there's my boyfriend, Derek. And I think I have one as well, somewhere in the bag. If you want to become a VIP member, you just keep filling up these stamps. If you are an otaku or a weeaboo or whatever, but yeah, don't get this confused with your credit card. <laughs> and also along the lines of like anime and such, we went to these Purikura. And if you are from LA like ourselves, they do have round one. If you were to do this at round one, it's around nine to 10 bucks. But of course, Japan is cheaper. This was around $4. So this is what we did. And there's another one as well, which is more. I guess Rola is a celebrity in Japan because I was checking out her Instagram, but I didn't know that at the time. But yeah, that's this one. So next up we have the beauty portion of the haul and I'm actually wearing the traditional Japanese yukatas which are provided in hotels in Japan. Usually it's 100% cotton or something, you know, quite durable and breathable as well. So here we have all the beauty products I got in Japan. Well, at least this is most of them. So as you may already guess, Japan is famous for their sheet masks. And this one is actually a pack of 30, and this was only $10 at the drugstore. The reason why these are so affordable is because it's in a single pack. They're not individually wrapped, which actually is more eco-friendly as well. So, as you can see, just packed, soaked in liquid, and the texture is also a lot thicker than sheet masks you would buy in the States. 
And for sanitary reasons, they also have these pair of tweezers to remove the mask per use. So next up I have one of these hair oils and this is from Subaki and you may be familiar with the brand Subaki as it's quite popular at Mitsua, Nijia and any other Japanese, I guess, grocery store, beauty supply store. So this is basically just spraying your hair on wet or damp hair and it, the smell is pretty nice and yeah, it does help to moisturize it and this is only around $8 versus in the US it would be around 18 or double. So next up we have Cure, which is a natural aqua gel and so initially we bought this but we weren't quite sure what it is but it was advertised as one of Japan's top sellers and then when I looked it up online I realized that it's one of Japan's top exfoliators so this one we paid around $20 for it on Amazon it'll be around 25 or so but if you buy it in store not on Amazon it'll be around 40 bucks in the US so this is a quite good deal as well so it's basically like this clear gel that you first wash your face completely cleanse it, dry it, you place some on your skin, let it absorb into it, and then once it dries up a bit, you'll rub it around and your dry skin scales will flake off. When you use the product, you'll see that it doesn't have a scent, so it's really gentle on your skin, and they recommend to use this two to three times per week. On the back of the hand, you can still see that it picks up the dead skin cells, and if this were on your face, you would probably notice less of like the whiteness, it'd probably be a little bit more brown or so, because of like makeup and more things that settle into your face. But yeah, that's basically what it does. It's a gentle exfoliant on your skin, and then you rinse it off, and then, yeah, you'll be left with a really smooth skin texture. As you know, Dolly Wink is hugely popular in Japan, and this is actually one of the best eyeliners on the market, and it beats a lot of eyeliners, if not most eyeliners at Sephora. So in the States, this would be around $17, whereas here, you can get it for as low as $10, which is what I got these for. So I got a black, I got a dark brown, and I also got one of these setting powders, which I got on a whim at the drugstore. It was at one of the checkout stations, and it was labeled as one of their most popular items, at least for beauty or whatever. So I wasn't quite sure what it was when I purchased it, but once I opened it, I could instantly tell that it's one of these finely milled setting powders. And mostly I just like the packaging and the scent is really nice as well. It's like a light peach scent. So you just put the powder puff on it and then just place it on your skin. And yeah, I think it does a really good job at mattifying things. And lastly, I got a few products from a hugely popular brand here, drugstore brand in Japan, which is called Canmake, which I've actually known about for years but never had gotten a chance to try any of their products. So right here, I have a highlighter, I have an eyeshadow palette, and I also have a cream blush. Cream blush is hugely popular in Japan, popular everywhere else as well, but most specifically, they apply it on the apples of the cheeks, whereas Westerners will apply it kind of more on the cheekbones. So I kind of wanted to absorb the culture and, you know, try a different makeup style while here. So this is just one of these peach cheek glows that, yeah, it blends quite well into the skin and it gives it a natural finish. And especially if your skin is dry like mine, this is perfect because it won't accentuate your dry patches. And this one was about like eight dollars next i have the highlighter from can make as well and they actually have like a blue variation a pink variation and obviously i got the blue variation but yeah this is what this highlighter looks like i think it's really nice it's a cool tone highlighter so it neutralizes any redness that you may have so depending on your undertones you may want to go for this and lastly i got this eyeshadow palette which was around eight dollars as well and mostly I like that brown color because it's a really good overall shade or if you want to put it in the outer third of your eye. And then, of course, this, this highlight shade is really nice as well. So super travel friendly and I really love the packaging as well. And lastly, to wrap up the beauty section of this haul, I have a few tax-free items to share with you today. So when you buy beauty products in Japan from over anyone and take it back home if you're internationally traveling, you will have to put it in one of these bags that will be sealed after you purchase it and it will have to be remain sealed as you go through the airport and travel home. So I know Japan is really famous for their skincare so I got a few of their skincare lotions. I mainly just picked it on the basis that these are popular and it was typically at the end caps or obviously having these sticker designations on them. And I also got this gel cream which I think would be good because I do have more dry skin. And I also got this room diffuser and this was only $8, and if you were to get this for like $8 in the States, it would be like a cheap brand at TJ Maxx, it won't even smell good, it won't nearly be the same size. So 
I didn't want to pass it up even though it is a bit heavy to travel with. I think the smell was really great. And lastly, I got this skin lotion from Kose and this is also advertised as one of their most popular items and I am familiar with Kose um, because they are a quite big skincare brand. <laughs> on to the lingerie portion of the haul and I got all of these lingerie items in Harajuku which you can find crazy deals and especially if you're used to Victoria's Secret which is typically where I purchase my lingerie you'll find these deals quite great so I got a whole bunch of bras there so the shocking part about these things is they're only $12 each and it's a bra and underwear set so we'll just go over the first one this is what it looks like so these bras are pretty highly padded but if you're gonna buy it at Victoria's Secret anyways Typically a lot of their bras are highly padded as well. The second one is like this light pink and blue with silver metallic piping and then like kind of these little 70s flowers on it. Like it retails for 1200 yen, which if you convert that to today's USD, that's around 12 bucks. And also with the sizing, the sizing is a lot different. So that's one thing I had to get used to when shopping here. But so this is a size C75. 75 represents the band size and C obviously represents the cup size. This one has ruffles on it. So the only downside to these bras are if you want to wear like a more form-fitting crew neck or something, these will show. And yeah, these are the accompanying underwear. And all the underwear come in size medium despite the bra size or the cup size or whatever. Up, we have the menswear portion of the haul and here we have two hoodies, one cardigan, a ring, and also some babestas. But these are the babestas with a silver star and on the back it says babesta. So <laughs> these remind me of like the Adidas superstars which have become hugely popular once again. And next up is this ring from Justin Davis and it kind of has a similar styling to Chrome Hearts in terms of detailing and also the materials that they use because they use sterling silver as well. It has the Justin Davis words imprinted on it and it also has their signature crown logo. So next we have this Comme des Garcons cardigan and once again in the US if you were to purchase this this would be around 450 however in Japan this is 250. And next we have a shark hoodie from Bape and now this one has a full zip and this camo hood on it and one of the most unique features about this hoodie is the back because it says P-O-N-R which stands for point of no return and it has these dates here as well. And then everywhere else is just like this khaki green and there are some of these star imprints on the sleeves as well. Next up we have this camouflage hoodie which is purchased from the Bape store in Kyoto. Now this one is unique in that this one is a Swarovski crystal Bape logo. So on all four letters it has the Swarovski crystals. Now once again if you were to purchase this in the US this would cost you around $450. However here this is around $300. And lastly I'm actually wearing one of the Bape hoodies as well which I hauled in my previous portion. But yeah, this is the black velour hoodie with the silver detailing. There's like the silver patch on it. You can see the shark teeth and the silver accents. And once again, if you really wanted to, you could zip it up all the way, which is kind of hard to do it yourself because you don't want to like zip your face. <laughs> I'll just show you. Yeah, so that's the whole deal with this. And that wraps up the menswear portion of this haul. So next up we have the dog clothes portion of the haul. So I'll show you the first outfit which is for Woofy and Woofy is a boy dog. So yeah, he gets the little suit jacket with these little silk pants and there's elastic which will go around his legs. And the front part is like this Velcro to get it on and off. And there's these little pom poms on it as well. So I hope my other dog won't chew on it because they tend to like those sort of toys. And it kind of has like this formal neckline. And the second one is for Lacey. Once again, it has this Velcro closure and this is actually a kimono. So the main feature on the back is of course this beautiful bow with these embroidery detailings on the edge. 